200 years after the Tigarian Interregnum, a new power began to grow in the southeast of the world in the land of Nabia. Nabia was not a singular government at first, but merely an amalgamation of different tribes and clans of families and peoples. However, over time these clans had united to form a powerful force known as the Osmod. Osmod was a sultanate that was largely human populated. Saint Ruva, who had wandered the world after Tigaria's fall, still speaking the hope of Andorism, had come to Osmod only sixty years after the fall of Tigaria. There he met the then Sultana Yasmin al Sharia, who took a liking to the old man. However, her friendship with Ruva b- proved to be a bother. Osmod's current cult worshipped the Dionan Frathan. Frathan was a one of the fallen Dionan, hidden in the veil between the Ethereum and the mortal world. With Tigaria now gone and Andorism a near dead religion, he could not risk the faith surviving into Osmod's lands and flourishing. So he immediately went about sowing seeds of distrust and anger amongst the people. Though Sultana al Sharia tried to keep peace and bring fortune to her people through Ruva and his teachings, the people saw him as a foreigner and an outsider. The teachings of Andorism were a blasphemy to Frathan, and thus Ruva should be put to death. Al Sharia refused to grant this request and hid Ruva in her palace. However, the mobs grew more fierce, the rioting more intense, and soon Yasmin al Sharia was given no other choice but to offer Ruva to her angry subjects. Ruva assured her it was all right, that his time was now, and that Alani would bless her and her family for her kindness to him. Ruva then walked out willingly to meet his fate. He was dragged out by the angry mob and executed publicly for all to see. Sultana al Sharia was despised by the people for her softening heart to the saint of Andorism, and only a week after Ruva's execution, a coup would be attempted on her life. Fortunately, Alani was true to her, and when the citizens attacked the palace, several were struck dead almost instantly. Others were transformed and morphed into terrifying monsters. It is from these punished individuals that beasts like the desert worms, the Gertablilu, and the flayed skins were discovered. In the shock and confusion, Sultana al Sharia fled from her kingdom with her children and settled in Zathania, a nation far to the north and across the sea, where Alani blessed her and her children for generations. But meanwhile, a new power rose in Osmod, the new Sultan Bashur Sharmat of the Sharmat clan. The Sharmat were zealous to Frathan, and under his rule, he began a vicious regime to crush the heretical faiths to other Dayanan in his kingdom, as well as the destruction of Andorism and its churches. The regime grew quickly and powerful, and in the course of a few years, not only had the Osmod Sultanate stamped out all dissenting religions and faith, but it also solidified itself as a military power to rival the once great Tigaria. Bashur changed his name to Osmod after his own kingdom and declared henceforth that all sultans and sultanas of Osmod should bear its name, for, as he said, sultanates live and die by their ruler, so they are one in the same. But great as Osmod I was, he was not the true danger that faced the world, for unbeknownst to him and to all of his people, another force would grow right beneath their very nose and it would surface 360 years after his rise to power. His true name would be lost to time, stricken from almost every record book out of fear, but what is known is that he was born in one of the tribes of the Osmod Sultanate. He was described as a young man with a fair complexion and light hair, which was distinct for the desert folk, which led some to believe that he may have been a foreigner. What is also known is that he was cunning, and he was also blessed by something. The young man traveled through the lands of Osmod into the neighboring nations of Kunsha, and during his travels, he discovered something powerful, ancient and twisted. A fallen Dionan, Avarin. Avarin revealed to the young man many truths and secrets of the world and its creation, and how the powers that brought this world into being could be used to propel it into a greater age yet. All that need be done is unleash it. Avarin could not do it himself, but this young man, perhaps he could manage the task, the ultimate task, the final goal of every fallen Dionan who sought revenge against their creator, the destruction of the veil between the Ethereum and the mortal world. They showed him, showed him the true nature of creation, 
and Dagoroth, as he would come to call himself, fell in love with it. The young man sought the aid of Avarin, Frathan, and Krella, all fallen Dianan who would grant him power, authority, strength, and skills. But of these gifts he was given, the most vital was the one that is now lost to legend itself, the Yatagoras Eye. When the young Dagoroth returned to Osmod Sultanate, he was no longer the teenage boy who had left it, but a shrewd, cold, and calculating creature. He approached the then Sultan Osmod IV, also known as Osmod the Great, with a proposition to expand the territory he now controlled and conquer the world in the name of the glorious Sultanate. Of course, Osmod the Great knew that this young man likely had other intentions behind his proposition, but he could not question the power that Dagoroth wielded, nor he could he deny his own desire for more power and land at his disposal. So he agreed. With Dagoroth by his side, they began what was known as the Great Osmod Expansion. Within ten years, the Osmod Sultanate would spread its influence far and wide, capturing and capitulating lands within its neighboring territories and up into further lands. Their military strength was incredible, and the tactical brilliance of Osmod was undeniable. Plus, there was his mysterious and dangerous advisor, Dagoroth, the one with the frightening eye that none dared look upon. When he joined Osmod on the battlefield, it was like the fates or the gods themselves rose up to aid Osmod. As if natural disasters could happen in an instant, mutations take hold upon the enemy, and monsters would join the Osmod warriors on the battlefield. Kingdoms that rose up against Osmod were toppled, attempts on his life thwarted, and races that were non-human were forced to be subservient or pay the price. Osmod the Great was a mighty leader, beloved and respected by his entire empire, and with each territory he captured, the influence and hold of the Sultanate was further solidified. But as for Dagoroth, the sorcerer was never satisfied. When he wasn't in the court or at the shoulder of Osmod, he was away establishing workshops, laboratories, and secret temples where he conducted strange and unnatural research. No citizen of Osmod's dared approach his dwellings willingly. But that didn't mean these places were empty. As payment for his services, the Sultanate offered slaves, servants, and criminals to Dagoroth for his strange purposes and practices. The howls of pain, fear, and death could be heard wherever these places were hidden, and everyone knew to stay far, far away from Dagoroth. None knew what he was researching. Only he himself knew the truth. Dagoroth sought to strengthen the power of his Yatagoras eye and grant him the power to break open the veil of reality, pouring the overwhelming power of creation into the world. Somehow, Osmod the Great learned something of Dagoroth's intentions, and, fearing what may come of Dagoroth's plans reaching his completion, he ended his campaign of expansion. Dagoroth tried to speak reason to him, but Osmod had come to fear his advisor and said that his expansion days were done. The usefulness of Osmod IV had come to an end. Dagoroth needed a new conqueror. Fortunately, Osmod's eldest son, Salik, was old enough to succeed his father. Known as the Magnificent One, after his many successful war campaigns in Kunsha, Dagoroth felt it was time for him to take the throne and further the empire. As for Osmod the Great, he was found dead later in his chambers, his face contorted into one of horror, his eyes sunken, his skin pale, his hair wispy white, as if he'd aged eighty years in an instant. Some said it was like his soul had been violently torn from his body. And yet, the death was ruled natural, for no one wished to even think of the real culprit or their methods. After this, Osmod V took the throne, and from there the campaign to conquer the known world continued. Osmod V was even more vicious than his father and twice as brutal. Though he was known to the people as the Magnificent One, he earned the moniker Osmod the Terrible to every country he encountered. Under his leadership, a non-human slave trade was established, sending fear through the entirety of the non-human world. Any army that opposed the Sultanate were crushed without mercy and without prisoners, leading smaller territories and lords to surrender without a fight. There was no stopping the expansion of the Osmod Sultanate or the mad experiments and machinations of Dagoroth the Dark Harbinger. His very presence and sadistic countenance terrified every member of the royal court. 
No man, woman, courtesan, slave, or servant dared go near him, and a darkness fell over all of the Osmod Sultanate. The world awaited for the inevitable takeover of this vicious regime. But the will of al was not to be denied, and the plotting of these powers was not unknown to him. Their plans would be stopped, and salvation would come on the wings of a raven, for while the Osmod Sultanate was making its plays, another power was rising, one that would reshape the course of the world.